in this video, I'm going to be setting up touch reactivity on this avatar. I'm also going to touch up on the various edge cases of touch reactivity, problems that you might run into, what to do when you run into these problems, and how to solve them. Touch reactivity is a feature of the goose shader that will make the material interact with things around it. So, for example, your legs will interact with the floor beneath you and bulge out when you take steps. People would be able to see how the material kind of bulges out when they touch the material, and your hands will also bulge out when you touch things. So, it's a great way to add a little bit of extra life to your avatar. However, touch reactivity isn't that easy to set up. There's certain things that can go wrong and certain things you need to know when setting this up. For example, right now, as you can see, the eyes are very weird in comparison to not having touch reactivity on. And so, we're going to be covering things like this, problems like this, and how to solve them. So, let's get started. We're going to be enabling touch reactivity on all of these four materials right here. So, let's select all of them. Go into touch reactivity and set the mode to enabled. And as you can see, something has already changed. Let's create a 3D object, plane. Let's move it around. And as you can see, the avatar is reacting to this plane. Two things might go wrong here for you. First off, you might have clothing and accessories on your avatar or other materials on your avatar, and things might go wrong, such as the eyes right here. Uh, things can kind of freak out when this happens. Or for example, if I turn on this piece of clothing right here, as you can see, the clothing kind of acts weird with the touch reactivity in ways that it shouldn't supposed to, right? It's, it's, it's seemingly reacting to it. So that might happen and stick around. We're going to be covering this a little bit later on in the video. The other thing that could happen is that this plane might not be interacting with your avatar or the bulging might be dependent on where you kind of are positioned in the scene right now as you move around. First off, you might have lights turned off right here. So if we turn that off, as you can see, touch reactivity doesn't work anymore. So make sure you have lights turned on. The other thing is that you might not have a direction light in your scene. I have two right now, and if I disable them, as you can see, touch reactivity doesn't work anymore. So make sure that you have a directional light in, in your scene. So you can right click, create light and directional light. And we're also going to be later on adding a directional light to our avatar so that we make sure that the world has a directional light as well. Another thing that might be happening is that your graphic settings might be misconfigured. To fix that, go into edit, project settings, quality, and then make sure that your quality level is selected to be on VRC high. Sometimes it goes to low or mobile. And if we select those, as we can see, touch reactivity disappears. The, the legs aren't reacting anymore. But if we go to high, the legs are now reacting again. So make sure you're on high. Okay, so on this avatar, we have some problems here with the eyes. The eyes are currently not set up to be not touch reactive. Um, I don't want to make them touch reactive, so I'm not going to be putting a goose shader on top of them, but I also don't want them to freak out. And an easy way to fix that currently is to just mask out touch reactivity to not happen on the face. We'll go ahead and talk about more of the things that you can do in this situation, especially for clothing, a bit later on in the video. So if you have a problem like this, or if you want to have more options for how to fix these things, please stick around. But now, for this specific situation, I'm going to be using a capsule mask to mask the face out so that it's not touch reactive. So the way we do that is we first of all need to make sure that our avatar is baked. So in this situation, we are going to need to bake the body mesh. We have more information available on baking, what you need to do with it and what it does in the manual right here. So you can look around for more information on baking here. We also have two uh, material setup videos available in the description that also walk you through the baking process. But for now, let's make sure that your avatar is baked. And now we're going to be setting up a mask for the body. So we're going to go into mask channels, enable a capsule mask, press edit capsule, and then position this on the face. You can find more information about masks and how to use them in the mask channel tutorial video available in the description. I'm going to invert it, set the strength up to be a little bit higher, and then mess around with the parameters here. Okay. I'm going to keep that, and then I'm going to say go into touch rate, and then I'm going to go into touch activity, go into mask channel, and set this to be the capsule mask. Then we finish. You can set the capsule mask whenever you want. You don't have to do this while you're editing the capsule. 
And as you can see, the eyes are no longer freaking out, and the face is perfectly fine. But however, now, what's going to happen, it, that you need to be aware of, is that the face is not going to be touch reactive. As you can see, the ears are, but the face isn't anymore. And that's exactly what we want in this situation. Again, we're going to have more options for you later on in the video, so stick around. Next up, we have to add a direction light onto your avatar. Direction light is required for texture activity to work properly, and not all worlds, in fact, most worlds are not going to have one. So we have to add one to our avatar to ensure that there is one in the world for texture activity to work. So, the way we do this is we go into Value Factory, go to, scroll down into the Prefabs folder, find Directional Light for texture activity, and just drag that onto the root object of your avatar. And that's it. You're done. Now, this is going to make your avatar at least poor rated, but that's just something that we have to deal with for texture activity for now. Okay, and now there are certain limitations that you need to know when using touch reactivity. First off, it's not going to work in the default VRChat home world. The VRChat home world is just built different and it's just not going to work there. So you need to test it in different worlds. If you need to test things, I recommend going into a different world, such as Avatar Testing Chamber. The link to this world is available in the description. Another thing to note is that touch reactivity will also not work in mirrors. So do not expect touch reactivity to be present in mirrors. It will, however, work in your camera. So you can fly around with the camera and inspect yourself and take pictures with touch reactivity. Another thing is that certain worlds might have various fog volumes and halo and lighting effects and miscellaneous post-processing that will make touch reactivity look transparent. Here's an example. As you can see, the avatar kind of looks transparent in this world. Now, we already have some things put in place to mitigate this problem. For example, if you have touch reactivity on, we immediately put you on Render Q3000, which solves this kind of transparency, like see through problem on most worlds. But however, it's not going to fix it on every world. There is one way to work around this. We have this feature called Minimize See-Through Artifacts. And what this will do is it will force the avatar to be at render queue 4000. As you can see, if we turn this on, render queue jumps to 4000. And from my testing, what I've noticed is that if the avatar is at render queue 4000, touch reactivity will not have any of those see-through artifacts in pretty much every world I've tested. However, there is a problem with it. You will be rendering on top of pretty much everything else. So with this turned on, you might see other glitches such as transparent materials rendering behind you, or you obscuring nameplates, stuff like that. So I recommend only using this in case you really want to make sure that you don't see see-through artifacts in the world, but don't mind other artifacts with transparency and nameplate. Another thing to note is that when other avatars interact with you, not all of them might be able to trigger this touch activity. That's unfortunately going to be a factor of how the materials on that other avatar that's trying to interact with you work and if those materials just aren't properly set up so to say if they for example have other depth effects turned on then they're not going to be able to interact with you this also means that if you have another avatar trying to interact with you that also has touch reactivity turned on both of your avatars will not react to each other this is just unfortunately a consequence of the technical implementation of this and there's not much we can do about that Another feature of touch reactivity is that it has a toggle that you can animate. So in cases where you just want to straight up turn off touch reactivity on your whole avatar without having to do a material swap, you can animate this bypass touch reactivity toggle right here, and then make an animation that toggles this on and off. And as you can see, touch reactivity right now is on, and if we click bypass, now it's off. And now with all that knowledge, you're ready to upload this avatar into VRChat and start using it. Okay, let's move on to potential issues that you might have. The first one is going to be clothing. So, as you can see, clothing here is just kind of not having a great time with touch reactivity. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to disable deformation and dripping on the avatar and only have touch reactivity on. As you can see, the goo is just kind of going through everything here. If I turn off touch reactivity, as you can see, it's all fine, right? But with touch reactivity on, it's just a mess. So what's going on? Well, the clothing here is signaling to the shader that there's something there and that the shader needs to react to it, right? So this is why it's bulging out. So the first thing that we can do is we can go onto the shader and adjust the render queue. Uh, right now, we're using the standard shader for this clothing. And 
and the thing that you're going to be wanting to do is set the render queue to something above 2500. Now, unfortunately, on the standard shader, if I try to do that, set it to 2501, for example, it's not going to like it, and it's going to reset it back to 2000. So I'm going to be switching to Mochi because Mochi doesn't really care about this, and Mochi is pretty simple to use as well. So Mochi Zuber. And then render queue, let's set that to 2501. And voila. As you can see, the avatar is no longer conflicting. Now, I also want to set this on the metal uh, as well, because this uh, piece of clothing is made out of two materials. And you're going to want to do this on pretty much every material that would be conflicting with um, your avatar here. So previously, we had problems with the eyes. And if I were to go ahead and, for example, disable the uh, mask here on the eyes, and then go into my avatar, go into the eyes material, and set the render queue of this into something like 2001. As you can see, uh, well, first of all, there's a specular ring going on around it, and that's kind of freaking it out, but there's no longer any kind of problems there. But if we go into the specular ring and set this to 2502, for example, as you can see, now the eyes aren't having any problems anymore. There's also a blush here, so I'd have to fix that as well. So, oh, the blush is already good. It's already in 3005. So yeah, and that's one another way of doing that, right? So you can set the render queue to something above 2,500, preferably 2,501 or 2, to kind of work around this problem. If it doesn't work, try setting it to 3,000 and above. The second option for you is to actually just use the goose shader itself. And by using the goose shader itself, you'll also be able to use the minimize artifacts checkbox. Because by setting the render queue to this 2,501 value or anything above that, we're exposing our material to that see-through problem again. Right, even if touch reactivity might not be on this material, then we're still gonna we're still gonna see that problem in worlds. So if you want to use the goose shader, go ahead and find your material, go and find the shader drop down right here, click on it, the dot value factory, go to, and then goo. And as you can see, the clothing has now become gooey. I can actually keep it gooey, right? But I'm gonna be disabling goo right here, going into touch reactivity and set touch reactive mode to don't interact with other touch reactive materials. And voila, problem solved. And of course, you have access to minimize artifacts in case you want to use them as well. The third option is to actually use a standard shader that's compatible with touch reactivity. So if you'd like to use a standard shader that's compatible with touch reactivity, go ahead, select your materials, find the shader drop down right here, click on it, go to value factory, go to, and then select one of these two. If you're using a specular setup, Go ahead and choose the specular setup one. Otherwise, if you're using a metallic roughness or smoothness one, go ahead and choose the Unity Standard Touch Reactive Compatible one right here. And voila, as you can see, we're now on the standard shader. Our render queue is 2501, which the standard shader usually doesn't let you do, but because we have this kind of baked into the shader, the material lets us do that. And we're not interfering with touch reactivity, as you can see. And that's it for the workarounds that we have available for fixing materials interacting with touch reactivity. And so another problem that you might run into is that touch reactivity might end up creating holes in your avatar when it bulges out. On this avatar, that's going to easily be illustrated by the hair. So let me quickly go onto the hair and add a little sphere that we can interact with. And as you can see, when I move the sphere around, the hair kind of breaks apart. Like there's a hole now in the hair, right? That's not what we want at all. Fundamentally, this is a problem of the normals having discontinuities. As you can see, they're no, not very smooth here. They need to be smooth, and there's like a very sharp edge here. That's a discontinuity, right? And pretty much we need to solve this by essentially smoothing the normals. And unfortunately, that's going to mean that you're going to lose custom normal data like this. The solution to this is to decide if we want to have discontinuous normals like this with the hard edge, and in return, disable touch reactivity, or rather, set this to not interact with other touch reactive materials, or to have touch reactivity enabled, but smooth the normals during the bake process. So what we'd have to do to smooth the normals is we'd have to go onto the here object, right-click on the skin mesh renderer, and bake it with smooth normals. And as you can see, the hard edge is now gone, and we no longer have that split happening, which is what I want for this uh, specific avatar. 
If you don't like the results of that smooth normals, you can also try to use the Unity FBX importer to smooth normals for you. And we walk through that process in this text file right here. That's about it for touch reactivity. If you have any more questions about it, please consult the documentation right here. And touch reactivity is still going to have edge cases and it's not going to be perfect. And in case you need help or are running into issues with it, please check out our Discord and make a support thread on there and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Have fun!